start with the numbers. The numbers are, um, uh, are basically the language of our business. They are frighteningly good numbers that you've written. Um, yeah. Congratulations, Thank you. first of all. A round of applause. These. It's pretty amazing. So, I mean, they do tell a story. So what, if you were just to say your one thing, what's your one thing that you think you did superbly well? Uh, I think, oh, I'm exciting. Start with there. you, Trace, yeah. Pushy, sorry. Um, look, is I it think pushiness? Is that, is possibly, it? no, I'm not pushy at all, actually. Uh, I think it's probably around energy. I think, um, and passion. Uh, you certainly couldn't do this business for the, the amount of time I've been doing it without that, that number one thing. Um, I loved it from the day I started. I thought this is my place. I've had uh, a number of careers. I'm, I'm, I'm probably, I've got a very short attention span. Uh, I either have to change my partner or my job um, regularly. And um, so luckily for the last um, 20 years- Why are years, people writing that down quickly? <laughs> No, I'm a bit of a free spirit, and I think what I love about real estate is that you get to see new people every day. There's new property, there's innovation. Um, it's a constantly changing industry. If I remained the same agent that I was 20 years ago, it was kind of relaxed then, um, you wouldn't be here today. So, yeah, I love all that about it, the change, but I think energy and passion is what, what absolutely gets me the listings. And, you know, I think as long as um, you remain true to yourself and don't tell lies to anyone, someone said to me, I think... It might have been John McGrath. Don't say anything in front of your vendors that you vendors that you wouldn't. Sorry, don't say anything in front of the buyers that you wouldn't say in front of the owners. And I think that's kind of stuck with me. Um, you know, I don't tell lies about things. I kind of rip the band-aid off early. I think that's important. And um, yeah, that's probably it for me. Wonderful, Maria. Um, care, I guess. I sort of very much care about my vendors and uh, probably put them before myself sometimes. Um, I, I believe real estate's about people rather than about um, the bricks and mortar side of it. Uh, so we're helping people on a journey in life. And I think that if we actually, um, you know, bear that in mind, every time you're walking into someone's house, there's a reason for it. Um, and that, that's sort of where I start my journey and I listen. I listen to what, what their needs are and if it aligns with my beliefs as well, um, then yeah, that's what I believe is important. Wonderful. So, you obviously do a lot of things great. Let's, if we were to look at some things, some limitations or some mooring lines that you've had to work most on to get to where you are today, what, are, what, are the, what would those things be? One or two things? Um, gosh. Um, I think um, running a team of people, um, managing personalities. I, I used to, I, I knew years ago that I used to hire people that I that I liked or that I um, that I felt aligned with in certain ways. And sometimes, and then you end up with a team of people that are pretty much like yourself. And that means that you know, if they all want to party all the time, then everyone's partying all the time. So it's probably better to try and choose people based on you know what the right fit for for the role for the team. I've been incredibly lucky to have some amazing people working with me for a long time. And I think um, all of the people that have spoken today have said it, you know, you've got to love the people you work with. If you don't love them, um, it's not going to be um, a, a great uh, relationship. You're not going to do all the things for each other that you need to. It's a very much, I'm a team player, like I was a, a good doubles player. I'm not a singles player. So I love having the backup of people that I can chat to, roll things on. You know, pricing things at the moment is incredibly hard. I think, you know, I don't like to give a vendor a number these days without sitting down with my team and going, hey, where do we actually see it? And I think doing all that research and, and everything with your team is, is super important. So <clears throat> challenges, keeping it all together, being the, the person that is going to help them succeed in their in their role as well. Like, it's not all about us. Um, and I think that's that's been super in a lesson over the years as well. Yeah. That's great. Maria. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> no, went, um, well, what, what I really wanted to tap into is you obviously do a lot of the, writing some phenomenal numbers, doing some amazing things right. But if we were to look at sort of some limitations or some mooring lines and the things you've worked hardest on to get to where you're at, so. Um, I work in a hard market, I think. Um, Seaforth, if, uh, we're all from around here, is a, is a suburb that's got um, a, a scattered um, selection of properties. I, I probably go, I, I wish I went to Mossman um, <laughs> in some respects or somewhere a little bit easier because it's taken a long time to get where I am. You know, it's not, it's, it's not a journey that only takes two years. Um, 
it's taken a long time. So, and I've had to evolve as a person. So, and I, you know, that word team that keeps coming up, um, you know, also the fact that I, I, I came into this business as a salesperson and then had to evolve into a business owner, that's a big thing. And I, I guess I truly believe that work within your strengths um, rather than try and be everything, because uh, otherwise you will. You'll, you'll waste energy that you should be putting elsewhere. Um, so, yeah, look, my team, love them, my family, our sales team, we all help each other on weekends at Opens. I've got other sales guys, we all work on each other's properties. So there's a very, very nice culture and I think that's, uh, that, that helps all of us also when we sit down and we, we brainstorm and we, we sort of work through um, everything together. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky in that respect. That's brilliant. Start with you with this one, Maria. So when you've written such big numbers, then the thing about real estate is it resets every year in yep. terms of your numbers and this thing called GCI and here we go again. I think it weighs a lot of people down. Oh, I wrote that. How am I going to do that again? How am I possibly going to do that again? So how do you reset after such a big year now? And certainly, you know, looking at, as Matt said, you know, there's some fairly significant things going on in the outside world. What about your inner world? What do you do to go again, motivate yourself, pick yourself back up, and here we go again. I think you've got to love this business, and if you don't, you probably need to get out or have a holiday or, you know, get your head checked or something. Um, so you do, you need to love this business, but I've never been, and I sort of said this to PK the other day, I've never been a figures girl. So you can ask me what I've written, and I had to ask my GM, I don't know. Um, and I'm very much about... I was, I think everybody's aware, well, most people, I was very sick um, 10 years ago now, so this is my 10-year anniversary. I was told I was going to die, so um, it's not a, a, a little thing. And I guess I went through a lot of coaching and that kind of stuff when I tried to get into the industry because I was out of it for two years. And um, his words of wisdom to me were just do one deal at a time. Just do one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, and I think I do that. So I don't try and overwhelm myself by um, being, you know, in all places and try and be everything to everyone. Um, but, yeah, I just think uh, that's me, unfortunately. So I'm not a numbers girl. So, like I said, I think if you do the right thing and if you do it consistently, it will evolve into success, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think it's un unfortunately. But I think it's fortunately for you and that's I think, wonderful, wonderful advice. What about you, Trace? What was the question? So, so, so this is... <laughs> This is over over 20 years for yep. you now. You started when you were 10. Yep. Yep. And um, so each year, I mean, with salespeople, what I see and hear and uh, the clock resets again and I'm back to zero and yep. these big GCI numbers and here we go. We've got to do it all again. How to do it all again. How do you motivate yourself, pick yourself up, go for it year after year yep. and, uh, and keep you know, growing you and your business. Yeah. Look, I think we're always planning ahead. Um, I'm uh, like you, Maria. I'm not a, not a huge numbers person, but I, I've got a I've got a bit of a plan always every every year. And um, sort of when we're doing this quarter, I've already I'm already thinking about next time. So I actually I actually love to to think about the next part of what we're doing. Um, I think that. Also, I like to have a plan for my marketing every year. I like the team to know what numbers they're doing. And I like to change things up every year so that we can perhaps push that bit further. So, you know, I, I have a loose plan. Um, I'm very good at delegating. That's been my big, the key, I think, for me because um, I know the things I'm good at. I'm good at listing the properties. I'm good at working with the owners. I'm good at selling the properties. I think they're three skills that you know, some people are great on the front foot and some are great on the back foot. I'm great on the front foot, but I've learned to be on the back foot as well. Like So selling the properties, no one gets paid unless the home gets sold. There's nothing worse than seeing, you know, doing a lot of hard work and then you see one of your competitors sell a listing. It's, it's, it's awful. So I think we've, we've focused a lot on the process of the sale and pricing and energy around the, the price and all that kind of stuff. So I think um, challenges, yes, there's plenty, but I think because it's such a diverse business and there's... These days, there's so much out there to help you. I, you know, I always think you've got to change it up, use a different coach, have a, have a bit of a look at the big picture and get out of your comfort zone a little bit. Try something new always um, and keep an eye on the numbers, but maybe delegate all the things you're not great at. Yeah, that's yeah. Wonderful, wonderful advice. 
Maria, next six months ahead, it's um, yeah, exciting or concerning? What, are the, what do you see are the biggest challenges that we'll all face in the next sort of six months in the real estate world? Um, I, look, it's, it is tough. It's going to be tough. But again, um, I think someone mentioned earlier, it, it, you know, we've been in this, well, I've been in this for 23 years. So you've seen, you've seen all the markets. So I, I like it because I'm one of these people that, I, you know, my list to sell ratio is very high. So I just keep going and keep going. As long as your communication's there with your vendors, as long as you've got the trust, um, like I said, you've got, to, you've got to do your meetings, you've got to have the tough conversations, um, but you've got to stick to it. So I'm not a quitter, I never have been. Um, I live life with a no fear attitude. Uh, I know that people have talked about, you know, live for, you know, I've got a tattoo that says live for today. And I think that sums up my life, you know, just give it your best because you don't know if tomorrow's there. And I put that into my clients as well and my work and, and, and how I, you know, I've put together, I think consistency is an important thing as well. So I have quite a structure to my campaigns and, and how I deal with clients and how I deal with my vendors. And that's something that I've fine tuned over um, a number of years and I, I feel it works. So I stick with it. Wonderful. Trace? Yep. Next six months. Um, I think um, the whole like lockdowns, COVID, the last two years have felt really different to previous years in real estate. It's you know, we're all, we're all tired. I think we're one of those professions. We just kept going. It was just unbelievable. We didn't really even miss a beat. You know, I haven't even had COVID. <laughs> it's like crazy. Um, but, every, but everybody has, um, has got through it. And, you know, we, 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 I feel like now I need to get back to what, what I always did to create that time out, work-life balance, um, you know, stop making excuses around... Um, early mornings, getting back into routine, that sort of stuff. Um, I'm pretty good about it, but I, I think I, I went sort of off off key a little bit there. And um, I think uh, having a structure that's going to enable everybody to take time off. It's, I've learnt that we, we we shouldn't be a slave to this business. Um, you know, we do super duper long hours, but as long as we're we, we've got our phone and our our schedules and that we know who we're calling, you can do it anywhere. So. You know, I can do it on a boat, I can do it on an island, I can, I can be somewhere. And I, a lot of my colleagues that have been in the business a long time have learnt to really uh, have that time out. And I think it's important. Um, and, and, you know, empower your team to, to, to do their role really well and, and don't feel like you're looking over their shoulder. And, and, and they know what they have to do as well. Everyone's got to have those key indicators for themselves, I think, is important too. So that's what we're working on at the moment. Brilliant. Hey, Pete, we've got a couple of questions, I believe. Megan Thomas from O'Gorman Partners has got a question. Megan. Thanks, PK. How do you go competing with bigger agents in your area? You guys probably don't have that because you probably <laughs> are the biggest agents in your area. But what, what is your advice to younger real estate agents that are competing with principals? Um, I believe you need to swim in your own lane. So you need to figure out what your point of difference is, what your niche is, and perfect it. Because, um, and obviously energy, particularly for the younger guys. Um, but that's what I believe. I think if you keep chipping away, um, and if you, keep, if you keep true to yourself, um, there's different personalities in this. I think we need to understand that, like I said, real estate's about people. It's about psychology. It's about, you know, if someone clicks with you and if they trust you, um, that's where I think you, everybody just needs to be true to themselves. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I think that... Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, look, I think you've got to work out what your unique selling position is. So, you know, for me, it's being a local resident, knowing all about development in the area, uh, understanding, you know, how the whole system works, knowing key people that are maybe in council or maybe in positions of power, um, and also just having a, an ability to build rapport quickly with everyone that you meet um, and be helpful. So if, if you haven't got a listing at the moment, maybe it's a matter of just ringing all your buyers and saying, hey, I just saw something pop up. So it's just, it's always being that, that go-to person. Start to be locally famous. It's a, if, you, if you ever want to succeed in real estate, it's going to take five years for everyone to probably get to know you. So start by getting your face out there, 
doing beautifully, you know, if you only do one thing a year, make it great and uh, be an information giver. It's, it's, it comes back to you. Thanks very much. It's, it's a great question. I, had a, I just want to add to that because um, I had the best um, experience at such a young age in real estate when I was 22 up against the director of the major franchise in Melbourne. And here I am, a little 22-year-old just out in sales, and I won the business. And I learned straight away to ask, how, why did you choose me? You know, you've got to be careful how you ask that. Like, why would you choose me? Yeah. But I said, well, yeah, why would you choose me? But they said, well, you focused on us. All he did was fo or focus on his team and his business and everything else like that. You, you just took an interest in us. So that's one thing I'd add to that is go out of your way to do everything you possibly can for that client. Listen, ask great questions and forget about who you're up against. It's the, the great agents don't care who they're up against. Um, those who really succeed don't care who they're up against. They care on their client. They care on doing the best thing they possibly can for their clients. Great, thank you very much. Great question. What's the next one? Millie, you're up. Hi. <laughs> if you could put down to one, one point, what has been the key to your successes? Um, look, hard work, first of all. Um, making sure that um, you don't forget people. Um, you follow up. It's simple stuff. It's simple stuff. Doing more the simple stuff more than anybody else. Um, making sure the database is, you know, we add to the database every day. Uh, making sure that consistency with your marketing. If you're doing just listed, just sold, 20 properties around the house, keep doing it. Uh, make sure everybody knows who you are and make sure that you're passionate every day because the energy will, miss, will, will get the listing um, rather than skill. Um, for me, I think um, it's about being an expert in your area. So I don't run myself thin. Um, I tend, I specialise in one suburb and, and really sort of focus on that. So I think that's probably my thing is don't try and be the agent to all, try and be the, the expert to something. It's interesting, I watched um, a couple of your videos uh, online the last couple of days to learn a bit more about, I know you Trace, but Maria, certainly looking at your clients and how they talk about you and how you talk about Seaforth and just that ownership of area and that knowledge factor is, is key, yeah. would you say? Yeah, mm. it's a big one. Um, and that comes with, you know, years of kind of people buying and selling through you and all that kind of stuff. But every, anyone can be a local expert. It's just a matter of um, making sure that you know everything about the suburb. And, you know, it, people that come in and, and I, I guess agents from out of area that, that come and sell homes, you know, it's really easy to go into a vendor and say, hey, look, you know, just ask them where the bus stop is to get to whatever school from up at, up at the Huntersville overpass. And most of them wouldn't be able to answer and I think that's super important. And all the all the really top agents that I know, they're all specialists in their suburb. And uh, you know, I think referring business that's not core area is something that I've always done too. Yeah. Never hang on to that. So. Yeah. Okay, we get the wind up. But last thing, last uh, yeah, one. We've probably got time for one more one more question. Has anyone got a question? First listing, how did you get it? Remember that time. Yep. Um, well, for me, it was a bit of an accident. I think I'd uh, walked the streets for... Uh, look, w when I started in sales, the, the agent that I was working for, the principal, said to me one day, I had been her assistant for about six months, and she said, oh, as of the first of next month, you're in sales. So it was kind of like, okay. It's, it was sink or swim, really. So I had to ring every person that I knew in the suburb. I had to drop a letter into every mailbox that was in my little patch, and I just had to keep working it. And finally, I uh, happened to run into a lady who was carrying her um, uh, shopping in with a young child, and I just took the opportunity, picked the shopping up, ran in behind her and said, hey, um, you know, do you want to sell your house? And she said, well, as a matter of fact, we're probably thinking of it, but um, who are you? And, you know, we had a really nice conversation. I said, look, I'm super keen. I'm so hungry to get the, to, to sell a house. I know I can do it, but the backing of a great agent, we've sold this, this, this. So I think it's important to talk about your office and the successes. And uh, anyway, after about three meetings, they gave me the job and it was a little sort of um, weatherboard cottage on Ride Road. And 
and um, you know, I just it was a success. Uh, and so I think you've just got to get that start, that confidence, and then look. I reckon every listing you have, there's there's one or two that you can take, you know, that you will get as a result. So um, it's just a matter of getting started. Be consistent. Yeah. Using your company's successes as your own. Yeah. yeah. Maria. And I guess um, we all say going back to basics and in this day and age, I sort of, uh, they're probably going, what does that mean? Um, going back to what the, what, you know, like you said, the 10, 10, 20s, um, working off your, you know, the other, the other um, agents in your office's success. I know my first listing was a block of land in Chroma. So somewhere I wouldn't normally go, um, but at that point in my career, you just went where it was. Um, but again, it, it is about making sure that you are working off the success of your colleagues. Um, I say to all of my new guys, um, you know, go to, go to other people's opens. Um, I think that even if it's not yours, if people see you, it's about being seen, it's about being remembered. And um, I always sort of found that being a woman, we had an advantage because we looked different, you know, like people remember us more. Um, so just be seen. If it's not your and, – and like I said with my, my sales staff, it's just because it's not your open and you're not specifically getting paid, it will come back later. And I remember in my very early days, that's what I did. It was like, who's got an open? Where can I be? I'll take names. I'll take numbers. I'll, you know, sweep the floor, whatever. But it's just being seen, being out, being consistent. Um, it, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, I always, it, it, it is a long game and I think everybody has said that in here. But, um, yeah, that's probably the best advice I can give any newbies here. It doesn't matter if you're not getting paid. If you've got that mentality, then I don't think it'll work. Um, and I think it's easier now with the associate structures and the team structures that when we started, it was sink or swim. Um, so it's very different um, now. But like I said, just, just, be, just be the helper. Put your hand up. Help wherever you can. Because I think people will see, remember, and um, yeah, I think that's that's the way to start. It's about delayed gratification, yeah, not that instant gratification that yep. that most people are all about these days. So you know, growing that database, nurturing that database, it it, it takes a little time to get to your levels, but I think some of the insights today have been are going to be invaluable for people. But two wonderful, wonderful women of real estate and uh, very special people, and thank you so much for sharing such wonderful <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure.